Welcome back to an RPG Architect tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from UFO who wanted to see how to implement a hunger system in the engine. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the 2D sample project. And the first thing that we have to do is kind of set up the data that we're going to use for the hunger system. And so we're going to go to variables right here, and we're going to create two new variables. One is going to be for the hunger timer, and then one is going to be for just the hunger. So what your current hunger is, you could name this hunger level, hunger count, you know, but hunger is fine too. So I named it hunger. And then that leads us to the next thing that we need to set up, which we go to tools, database or F8, and then scroll down to the user interface. And this is where you're going to set up how much hunger level you actually have. So I did this based off five. And so you'll have to adjust accordingly to your project. But you can see that I basically created one HUD that has the five hunger icons. And all I'm using is a picture, and then I'm setting the icon, and then I'm just separating each one out just a little bit by 5% relative X. And so I just am increasing them out accordingly. So then, because I couldn't find a way for a variable to say whether something is showing or not, like, and I know this is early access, and maybe this is something implemented in the future, but if a, if a picture could be based could show or not depending on a certain variable value or something like this or a switch, then we could have this all in one HUD or one user interface. But since I didn't find that where we could hide or not hide depending on a value, we had to basically create four or in my case, five different UIs that show different amounts of hunger. So then I created a four, one, a three hunger, two, and then one. And then of course, if there's no hunger, you don't have to have any. So you didn't need to create one for that. And so, yeah, so we did the uh, variables that are needed. And then we did the user interface that's needed. Now, the next thing to go over is that in every scene, you're going to need an event. So we have two pages here or two scripts that it's called the top script is the one that is going to be trying to run first if the condition is true. So you can see that we do have a condition here. And what it is is that the local switch, the start hunger timer needs to be on in order for this page to run. Now we can move to the first page that runs right away. It's automatic as you can see. And the first thing I do is I wait. It seemed like I needed to wait, like in this case, 400 milliseconds. I needed to provide a small wait so that the fade out could fully complete before it started running the timer. And then what happens is I turn on a local switch called start hunger timer. And so local switches are found in the local data here, variables as well. And these are local only to the entity itself. I keep calling them events, but they're entities actually. So it's, it's only local to that entity. And as of right now, they do not persist. So when you leave the scene, this switch will reset when you come back in the scene. So right now this works really well in this case, because I want this to reset every time. And so it does. But I do remember the dev saying that he is going to look into persistent options. So it'd be really awesome if when you clicked on this, it had a persistent value right here, you could click on that. And you could basically hand pick which ones are persistent or not. I don't know if that's how it will be. But it would be a cool option. But anyway, that's kind of how local data works. They're only accessible via this entity. And they reset right now on scene transfer. So anyway, once that switch turns on, then the processing is activated. And again, this is automatic as well. Automatic means that it is running constantly in the background. It's not like RPG automatic where the game is paused during that automatic during the, uh, the automatic processing. This is more like a parallel processing in RPG maker where it's active in the background and you can still move around and and everything like normal. So in this one, you can see that our condition again is when that local hunger or start hunger timer switches on and then it starts to run a global switch and i wanted this to be a global script or i said switch but a global script i wanted this to be a global script because if there's any changes i wanted to do to it i didn't want to have to go through every entity since you have to have one of these hunger entities in every scene i didn't want to have to go through every entity so i wanted to just have it global so i could just change that global uh, script and so I obviously I named it hunger system. We'll see what this other one does here in a minute. All right, so that leads us to the database. And then we can go to see what our global scripts are doing. All right, so this first one is the hunger system. 
and you can see that we have a few things going on here. So the first thing that we're doing is we are decreasing the timer by one. And so one thing I forgot to show you is that in the variables here, this hunger timer, I have it set by default to 60. So it starts at 60 a value, which 60 is one second about. And so we're going to go back to the database there. And so right away, it's going to start minusing from that from that 60 value. And then what we do is we have a condition here. And the condition is if the hunger timer is less than zero, then we're going to start doing some things. So if it is, then we're going to do this, we're going to reset the timer to 60. Now you might want to use another variable to reset this. But as of right now, I'm just hard setting it to 60. Then we want to change the hunger, we want to minus one from the current level of hunger. And you can see also real quick, if I go out here, if I go back to hunger, you can see that my default value is five. So my default value for hunger, so I start with full hunger, basically. All right, so then we go down here. We, we uh, or whoops, no, nope, a little too far here. I think it's right. Yeah, so we reset the timer. We minus one from the hunger. And then we run another check here. And that is we need to check if the hunger is out or not. So if the hunger is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to have to do some more things. We're going to close all the interfaces because we don't need any of them open anymore. And then the by the interface, it's just you find them right here in the user settings and close user interface. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to reset the value to five. We're going to reset the timer to 60. And then we're just going to show a game over screen. Now, I don't know if you actually need to reset these variables, but I just did it anyway. I think the game over screen will eventually have like a load screen. And so you would just load to your last save. So this is if the, again, it runs this condition if the hunger is less than zero. However, if it's not less than zero, then it's going to do this. Or actually, this is. So this is the else for that. So it's actually the hunger timer, if it equals, so if it doesn't equal zero, then it's just going to run the hunger display manager, all right, which is another global script. Now, the reason why I did them separately is because this one was getting a little hard to read. I'm not sure exactly the design of the conditions are kind of hard to, I don't know, they're, they're a little tricky to manage, they're, they're pretty big, but they work and, and they're, they're fine. But I did notice that they're a little, they're a little large. So I wanted to break it up. So I didn't have to figure out what conditions were were what. So now if we go to this one right here, this one is simply running again, this runs if the timer is not less than zero. So it's constantly updating. If the hunger equals five, then we're going to first off close all interfaces. And then we're just going to open the interface of hunger five. And again, you just go to UI and you say open overlay. And then you would choose which one. Now, you probably could do some cool system where you store the ID. And then you say, if the overlay ID does not equal this ID, then to show it that way, you're not constantly updating this. But it just seemed like, like you could do that, and it would be more efficient. Yes, but this seemed to work. And I don't know, I would do something like this until I start running into performance problems. And then I would try to adjust it. But this this engine is pretty performant. So I think this is just fine. All right. So then we go down to so this is the first condition right here. And instead of doing else's, I just, I just copied and pasted this condition, it just felt a little easier. And it also I didn't want to look for else's I just wanted to look for the next condition. So here we go. Here's the next condition if hunger is equal to four, we're going to close all interfaces and we're going to show the hunger four interface. 
And you can guess that this is just how it's going to be. Hunger 3, I'm going to close and show Hunger 3. And Hunger 2, close, show Hunger 2. Hunger 1, close, show Hunger 1. So that was literally what the display manager does. It just show it's just showing the correct overlay to display based on your hunger level. And the hunger system is what is calling it. So yeah, this hunger system, it I mean it works for the most part. If you play the game, you can see that you can walk around. Now it's really fast because I only have it set the timer to 60. So after 60 seconds, you run out of hunger. And boom, you get a game over. And so when it reloads the game, you get five again, and it just starts going again. So yeah, anyway, this is a hunger system in RPG Architect. If there's any questions, comments below, Steam Forums, Discord, we'll get you figured out. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.